Game number one, ladies and gentlemen. There we have it. Bolua against OFD group stage. And it's obviously a rematch. As I said, this is a double round robin group stage that we have at the Gold League. And Bolua and OFD, they already played once. We're slowly and steadily in. Uh, like ending or like nearing the end of the group stage it's a double round robin best of twos are being played in the top four advance and right now we're actually looking at Bolo's rematch against old friends and yeah of the last time was actually able to tie Bolo. it was a bit of a weird one because Bolo dominated on the first map while Skya foundry had an insane lead in kills was two levels ahead at level 20 several items as well and then they went into the last fight got wiped and OFD pretty much won one big fight the entire game and then proceeded to grab the protector move cross map and end the game right there so Bolo it was a bit flabbergasted at that point they won the second map but obviously in a best of two every single map counts and today they are at least gonna try and take a 2-0 victory here but also in the spirit of letting you guys know Bolo at this point has pretty much accepted that they are more or less looking at a vacation in Asia at this point so there is a limited amount of training that currently goes into these games Polk has been talking about it a bit earlier in chat as well and against OFD I would still consider them to be the favorites but then again a lot of the matches that we previously seen from them haven't really gone too well with that said they got a victory with a 2-0 yesterday against KG and if they take OFD out today with a 2-0 that would mean that they actually move into fifth position they would still be quite a bit behind the fourth place points but at least it would bring them closer so just to give you a bit of an idea. Samuro gets banned out, so does Abatha. So Bolua has definitely a bit of a reputation by now in this tournament. We're also seeing bans on Garrosh and Mayev. Early picks into Ana and Dehaga Genji, which immediately means obviously that we also have the macro control in the side of Bolua, unless there's a false step play on the side of OFD, which we could see. We have actually seen more and more experimentation from Bolo's perspective on the front line. So uh, we had Schwimpy starting off, uh, Wubi actually starting off as main tank. Schwimpy then moving in the tank position. Now we're having Gia occasionally at the front. So it's an interesting setup that we see from the teams there. Now we have uh, ETC and also Jimmy taken on the other side. Now with ETC you immediately look of course at a potential stage dive on level 10 if you want to mirror Dehaka's movements. You can do that in the main tank position and also in the off tank position if you go for Echo Paddle and have the wave clear here to actually meet Dehaka there. But we have definitely a little bit of flexibility now for OFD to deal with that. That's Taranda and Mirrodin. Mirrodin Taranda. Jaina has been banned by Boluo. So we don't see any kind of nano booster Jaina together with a potential mosh pit if ETC does not go into stage dive. Here comes Phoenix and what do we have last? It is Malfail. Bolo's last pick on the other hand. They need a little bit more damage. What are they going to get as we're heading into Cursed Hollow? Our first map of this little stuff to is Tracer as we're heading into game number one. Game number one in our little series here. It's Cursed Hollow and Shrimpy on Genji, Poik on Tracer. So Gia is again in the tank position with 365 on the support ad we've seen in the last few days. Alrighty, we're good to go for the first game here. And even, honestly, even if you're in a position where you're like, well, I guess we probably can't make top four anymore. And should probably just enjoy our time in Asia a little bit. Right now, if you are playing on Bolo's side, there has to be at least a little bit of pride nagging you in the back of your head saying like, we lost the map to these guys the last time and this time it is not going to happen. So I'm excited to see how Bolo deals with it. And as I said before, there's a chance that they claim fifth place today. And there's still a couple of matches left. So mathematically, it is definitely still possible for them to make it into the top four of the tournament of this group stage at least so with that said as we're now heading into the game again a small disclaimer if you're currently experiencing a couple of low fps situations that is unfortunately only natural nothing that i can influence myself since we're relying on a clean feed from the chinese organization here and they run the stream on a lower quality than i do my own so my apologies for that that's unfortunately nothing that we have an influence over. Uh, I also can't control the overlay and I won't be able to show you stacks or uh, any kind of progress in terms of stats either. We have to rely on the Chinese observer for that. But again, we get the glimpse into the Chinese meta. We get to follow the suites and the little journey here. And that is definitely worth it. 
And those sweets are actually opening game number one up with one kill and maybe even a second. Tubo is down as well. After we had the initial kill, we now get the second one. So Phoenix and Malfoy are both taken out once and this is pretty sweet. That is actually a really good start for them. I, I actually, I mentioned earlier that um, Poig is uh, stopping by in the channel every now and then uh, before the games and just talks a little bit, shop and stuff. But the interesting part for me is I told him the same thing. Every time these days when Bolo starts getting heavily ahead in a series, I'm reminded of that Volskaya Foundry game that Bolu played against OFD where they dominated the entire game, lost one big fight towards the end and that decided the game in favor of their opponent. In this game on the other hand, we are just seeing one team again hammered into the ground and OFD is currently not off to a good start here. Zero kills against three, a level behind and Bolu has now also just taken their night camp away. Yeah, that's not something where like, yeah, mom, we have a good chance of winning the game here. And it actually looks like Tubo is dead again. Massive invade, massive collapse, and they are just four-manning the top lane right now. That's another big kill incoming. The rest of all of these teams has been trying to deal with the night camp in the middle, at least to an extent. So now we have four kills against zero, and we are level ahead for Bolvo already. Nicely done. Off to a good start. Definitely off to a good start. It honestly feels like the moment that they decided, okay, the little adventure is over, they all of a sudden start winning games there. Yeah. Uh, it's a little bit odd, but the game isn't over yet. And everybody that thinks, well, they're so far ahead, of course they're going to win this, should really go and rewatch the series that OFD and Bolu will play the first time in this group stage. And that's the drag from Wubi, though, as they're going for long and ETC. We'll try and get out of this, but Shrimpy is also now rotating in, trying to make the moves here. Coming in from the backside with a quick swift strike, dishing the damage out. ETC is still a bit low, but we're also seeing Bolo drop heavily in hit points here. And there is still R9 in the back line. Sick Moose is trying to make sure that everybody is nicely topped up there, and so far doing very well with that. Again, the interrupt with the Owl of Toronto this time. Gia coming in from behind, has to hobbity hop out there with Muradin. Yep. Muradin definitely proving through these little hops that he's superior to Gimli because he doesn't need Legolas to throw him around. He can hop by himself as he just proved pretty impressively. He didn't hop over the wall or anything, but hey, a hop is a hop. So seven talents on the board and that actually gives them a slight lead also in talents now. That's a pretty important one for this fight. Dehaka, by the way, is at the top of the map. He's currently just pushing this in, forcing Malthale to also meet the rotation. And with Malthale pushing out the mid lane, Muradin rotated over to make sure that they don't lose any waves there. So yeah, towards the top side, Dehaka now making the rotation back down. And this is a moment where Bolo can really try and make a play there. Dehaka could even like borrow in again, but they're going for Ana. And Shrimpy wants the kill as well. Oh, it's close, but they can't take Sigmus down. 365 on the other hand, he gets the channel. There's the Swift Strike, Stormbolt, and ETC is dead. Five kills against zero. OFD still struggling. They try to get the level 7 talent, but Schwimpy! Schwimpy makes the Genji play, and his dead drops the Fnatic spray, and that's the end of him. I mean, a true Genji player would have gotten the kill against Ana and then died. He kind of mixed things up here. It's not like you die and then you try and get the kill. It's the other way around. So, yep. Alright, with this, we're currently having once again Wubi at the top lane doing his thing in this Tubo here. The aspect of death, and actually, there's a good chance of taking Wubi down after all. And there's a burrow, in comes Phoenix, but the kill goes to Malthale. I actually like that Phoenix respected the 1v1. I appreciate that a lot. He could have tried to go in, he could have walked forward and try and get the last kit. He didn't do anything of that, no. He respected the 1 versus 1 situation, he allowed Malthale to get the kill for himself, and that was highly important. So two kills for OFD, is starting to actually sneak in a little bit and get their stuff together there. Five versus five on the map again. Dehaka is already coming in from behind. They came from behind. He's not a gyrocopter, but still, he's getting some value. Gia, on the other hand, he's down, and both of the tanks are eliminated, and the fight isn't over by any means. Malthale is also in trouble. Once again, we're having the attack against Turan. The Malthale down, Turan about to fall. Ooh, Poik also darting away, but it's Ana that falls first, and another swift strike saves Shrimpy. They get the kill against Shrimpy, and I can't believe this is happening. We're actually seeing four kills against OFD, and three heroes on Bolo's 
side. Ex the escape with pretty much negative hit points. At least that's what it felt like. Nicely done. Great coordination here from Bolo. Keeping everybody in play there. And now we have level 10 on the board for them. And they make the play for the boss. That's two tributes in their hands. They have a huge lead in experience and also in kills. And they make the play for the boss. Another quick look at that fight. And I mean, just look at these guys. Look at, for example, Turanda. Turanda was so low as 365 tries to escape there. Moves down to the bottom. And Poik and Turanda both dealing with Phoenix. He has the kills keep coming against the front line of OFD. But yeah. Nearly no HP left for them, and even Shrimpy getting low on Genji and then Swift striking straight through Reyna up to the top to secure another kill. So now we have the boss taken, and Owl also confirms that OFD hasn't made the same move on the other side of the map. Level 10 abilities are ready on both sides. We're having still the potential for ETC to decide in favor of stage dive to mirror the macro movements from the Haka. But he goes Moshpit! He's completely banking on the team fights here. Which means that long term we could see the Haka try and play the card here. As the Storm Ball, just in time for the interrupt. Actually nicely done. And that was only designed to interrupt it. They have no hopes of grabbing it, but they don't want to grab it either. They're just trying to get max value with that push through the bot lane. And every interrupt at the top side is going to help them to get a bit more value out of this. And OFD is going for boss? What? Okay, so they're going for the boss here while their keep is going to be attacked. I'm not quite sure if I necessarily agree with that. I mean, right now it looks to me like the keep might not fall, but it's definitely going to take some damage. Obviously, they're heading back already. So I'm not sure if that was really the trade that you want to go for, especially with the Haka already being topside. Could sleep that against Gia, though. Can they maybe capitalize on it? Ah, the boss interrupt! <laughs> and ETC is down. Highly unfortunate for ETC. He gets the quick mosh pit through it. It actually connects, but the boss is having none of that. And assists Bolo here. Interrupts, and they get the kill immediately after. The keep is already down to half HP. And up at the top side, obviously, there's still a boss working. But now with ETC gone for another few seconds, they're still trying to push this through a little bit more. And we're also looking at another tribute on the map now, which could be the first curse of the game. So yeah, 13 is also closing in for Bolua. That would be another advantage. Uh, the boss top side is nearly taking uh, the fort down, though. That fort is likely to fall, actually. Fort is about to go down at the top. But again, overall, more value through the boss for Bolo, simply through the setup. All right. There's the Haka already in position. Once again, play is being made here. The Haka with a channel, and he is going to get this one, isn't he? There's the interrupt attempt, and it is too late. It is curse time, baby. Now they're cursed, and we have again the attempt at a kill as Poi goes in, but needs to go for the recall here. Once more, Gia's moving in from the side as well. Yeah, bot lane, by the way. That keep is suffering even more damage as the entire minion wave just pushed onto that and OFD, they need to deal with that eventually. And honestly, at this point, I don't even know if they're going to be there in time. They might lose the keep. It's going to be close either way, especially with Bolo now trying to follow it up and make sure that that thing falls no matter what. Yep, that thing is extremely low. They're taking the Siege Giants camp now too. In the middle, Poig is going to get the experience for his team and making sure that even more structures are being attacked. But now at the bottom of the map, there might even be a potential kill in the cards for them. And instead, it's the kill against Jimmy. Reyna down, and they go for a two-ball. Malthael escapes through the gate for now, but the bottom keep is gone, and Bolo is way ahead in this game number one. 11 against three, the kill count. They still have the talent advantage. They took the fort in the middle. And now with the curse... Pretty much subsiding at this point. They are at least breaking through the wall in the middle as well. Uh, in comes Shrimpy. Tries to get the damage against Phoenix. Warps away. There's the bomb. And there's the kill. The setup with Genji and Tracer are so far successful. Nano boosted ETC. Uh, I mean, that guy can definitely put in a guitar solo. But when he's nano boosted, oh my god. Yeah. And he is absolutely dominating that. All right. So now we're having even the core nearly taking damage as the shields were already uh, halfway taken down. But just look at the setup. The stats alone. I mean, right now, it's honestly, it is tricky. So far, Malthael hasn't gotten a single last right stack. We have 17 for ETC on the level 1 for the prog rock. But even with those power spikes being completed soon, it is going to be very difficult for OFD to come back into this. 
Then again, we have seen it before, so we shouldn't count them out here by any means. Boluo, they thought they had the game safe on Volskaya Foundry the last time the two teams faced off against each other, and they quickly learned differently. So don't count them out here, because all that OFD needs is one big team fight, and they are going to take that momentum and run with it. Top lane, the attempt to go for Malthael has actually not worked out. Malthael went for the more dangerous rotation, and not the safe one through the main base, and therefore nearly fell victim to that Muradin setup, but the Stormbolt apparently missed, we didn't see it on screen, but on the minimap it looked like he was able to move out there. Hoik, nice, gets away. Was a bit of a problem here, for, well, could have been a problem if the power side actually connects, but right now things are looking extremely good for them. For Bolu, that is, and obviously you have now another boss up on the bottom of the map, Another attempt to see if they can maybe set something up with a good stone bolt here. There's also curse on the way, bosses up, one stun, the second one coming out. Gia's already getting pinged back here. Bot lane obviously pushing aggressively, which is why Malthael has to take care of the situation and push at least the catapults out. But with the tribute now spawning, the teams are both rotating in. From uh, Bolua's perspective, you want to fight here. Level 16 is fantastic for you and you don't want to give your opponent a second tribute right now. Okay. As the slide, they're trying to make the play for Gia. That didn't work. And in the meantime, the backline gets annihilated. Down goes Anna after the Haka hits his ult and the damage comes in from the squishies. There's the mosh pit. And Tracer is actually down, but so is Jimmy. Jimmy down, Tracer down. Oh, ETC and Malthael both dead. And Phoenix is likely going to fall. Is he able to get away from this? Nah, there's no way. Full team wipe as we have OFD out cold and Bolo with a move straight to the core are not going to be back in another seven seconds but they are trying to dish out the damage here without tracer at this point i might add they're definitely a little bit slow when it comes to dishing out damage towards that core but they're going to get some in i honestly don't know if they can end here it might be a little bit i mean three seconds five seconds it should be able to it's definitely it could be a game number one already but here comes the rest of the team and they might be able to defend this after all. Uh, but if they actually split nicely, they have a good chance there. Good dodge there again. And yeah, this is looking good. Boluo is taking game number one against OFD. Game number two, Boluo rocking it in game number one in Infernal Shrines is going to be our second map. So far, so good for the Swedes. Maybe they are able to get the 2-0 victory here today. We would actually mean that they have a 4-0 in maps this week if they can pull it off right now. So draft's going to be important, but game number one was a bit of a spanking. So good for Boluo that they are finally starting to, to get their act together here. It might be a bit too late to make it into a top four, we're gonna find out, but at least for now things are looking a bit better for them. OFD actually bans out Medivh since we just recently, yesterday actually, had Bolua on this map with Medivh doing a really good job there. And... Now there we go, well, where do we have our next ban? Bolua's actually taking it a little bit slower there, okay, Tirana gets banned out in this case. But after the aggression that we're seeing from Bolua, it honestly feels like they are just trying to go for more I don't know, maybe they're trying to have a little bit more fun with the games right now. As I said before, their practice regime is, I don't want to call it non-existent, but it is definitely very moderate, let's put it like that. That's at least what we're not only hearing from the players themselves, but also everybody else. So yeah, they are now, they've been for a while now in Asia, and they just seem to enjoy the times. Poik, for example, is currently in Korea. Uh, Shrimpy... As you know, a lot of them have been traveling. I think even uh, um, we'll be making a bit of a trip to Japan at some point. I'm not quite sure if that's correct, but yeah. So they've definitely have started to use the opportunities that they have by playing in the tournament and by being in Asia to travel a little bit around and visit multiple countries. And now we have Alex Straza as a first pick. Junkrat following on the other side. So far, no Anubarak. Anna got banned out. Yeah, there's the Anubarak pick. All right. For a second, I was wondering if we're going to see any of that. But yeah, Alex is actually taken. Very likely by 365 again. And what else do we have from Bolo? What else are we going to get from them right now? Diablo and Hanzo. All right, all right. So Arrow into Apocalypse is definitely becoming a possibility now for them. Could be pretty strong here. 
like that. It's always a cool combo. Jaina hasn't been addressed yet. Normally, I would expect Jaina to be banned out at this point. I think probably Bolo is going to ban her. There's a Zeratul ban on the other side. So now it's time for Bolo to see what they want to get rid of. For them, obviously... Ah, they ban out Malthale, so Jaina is still up. That could be good for OFD too. I mean, it's a fantastic pick for the map. You have the AoE damage, you have the burst damage in fights, so you can really work towards the objective and towards kills. And with the engage of Nuburak and a potential follow-up with, let's say, Malfurion, for example, you can make that. But instead, we're having Genji. Genji and Urel are getting picked, so a bit more of a Korean setup with Nuburak and Urel that was played a lot at the second Eastern Clash in 2018. It's a very, very standard combo. There's Illidan right now. All right, Polka's been saying that he played Illidan last week. And we have D.Va. Holy cow, Illidan and D.Va getting played here by Bolo. And OFD with the last pick, and they're heading into Deckard Kane. Infernal Shrines, game number two. It is D.Va time. We have game number two. D.Va, Diablo, Illidan, and Anzo. That's the setup there. We have Schwimpy on Illidan this time, Wubi on Diva, and yeah, bring it, bring it on. Feast on Fear for Dibbles on level 1, and also the old man on the other side, Deckard Kane as the last pick here for Sick Moose. Now again, we're having Bolo, of course, already in the lead here against their team in red, against OFD. And the big question, can they make the 2-0 victory a thing? Can they get that fifth spot now in the standings? And if they do, there's always the chance that they're taking down a couple of their strongest contenders. Obviously, it would depend a bit on the performance on the other teams here as well in the standings. But as it stands, we have hit the Nitrous for Wubi on D.Va on level 1. Uh, the attack already like, straight in against Assassin. Big brawl in the mid lane, like opening up the game with another bang here right away. And they might even get a kill. They're going for Urel, and the GOAT is down. Greatest of all time, my ass. Urel is dead, and that's the first blood in game number two. Bolua again with a pretty neat start into this. Definitely already showing OFD who's boss, at least in the mid lane brawl. Uh, trying to get another kill here too, and hello? That was a close call. <laughs> yeah, Shrippy was thinking about it. You can definitely tell. It was like that one moment when Illidan just like makes that little move towards the right, and uh, you get reminded of the Genji play against Ana in the last game, and Shrippy was just sitting there like, guys, maybe, and everybody, no! But I could, no! But man, no! I'm like, okay. Ah, yeah, the meatballs, always aggressive there, the sweets. And I mean, again, I can understand Swedish aggression more than anything else. If you ever, in your entire life, try to assemble IKEA furniture, you would be aggressive too. And I mean, they live in that country, so they probably have to do it all day, every day. So I can totally understand Swedish aggression. Makes perfect sense to me. They have to let this one go, though. So they have to let the Kazra cam go. Uh, that was when the OFD just was a bit too far ahead. Uh, Diva in the meantime is sitting top lane doing her thing and whoo -hoo -hoo, assassin yeah gets a swift strike through but that could have definitely been a kill there if he waited another second Gia was already looking for that wall stun saying like all right boys and so yeah Illidan is doing his thing in the middle let's talk about level 10s for a moment I mean obviously when you want to get the max value you would kind of think about Illidan going metamorphosis everybody is going to stack up on those shrine fights later on anyway so he is going to get a lot of it uh, if he plays that, but there's always that potential to go straight into the hunt and then have the pseudo global on the map. Yeah, Alex Straza. Oh, well, actually, hold your horses there for a second. Looking for the fight again. Diva, by the way, went into the fusion generator at this point. Oh, there we go again. Long in a bit of trouble, and the wall stun and the kill. 365. Honest Alex Straza is able to move away, and it's a close call. But. Oh, <laughs> what? <laughs> Genji gets away, and Hanzo, is he gonna fall? Yes, he falls. Unbelievable. Was the initial setup, but now they're trying to at least make it a 2 for one Sick moves, Deckard Kane, he's body blocked. Uh, 
and no respect for the elderly right there gets pushed in again but they don't have the damage here there's just nobody there that can do damage they're blocking everyone they're easily getting out the mass pings on alexstrasza there too diablo gets pushed back in is running out of mana and that is the end of gia gia is down and now it's two kills against two as we're seeing ofd not only with the counter kill but also saving genji and then getting another one Illidan has taken camps in the meantime, but yeah, six versus six all of a sudden. And Poik just barely getting away from Genji again. Yeah, that little brotherly battle that we're having. Uh, it's not quite the hound against the mountain, but it is still a clash between titans. So OFD at this point, they're obviously going to try and win the first Punisher here too, but Schwimpy has already taken a few of those uh, yeah, a few of this uh, minions for his team. He's having everybody else rotating in now as well. I'm still waiting for D.Va to add a little bit of value here too in the team fight. So far, Wubi has mainly been found on the offlane. For understandable reasons there. Has been holding that. All of a sudden, they're making their play right there. Dragon Queen already popped. They have 24 and they're going in. And there's the heals. There's also the Knight to the seal that we're seeing from Deckard Kane. It was a good setup, but it wasn't enough. And the Dragon Queen is reigning supreme here. Uh, doing fairly well uh, at this point. Again, they engage with the new Brock, but they're trying to get the explosion. There's the potential kills. Oh, zoning them out. Protector, Punisher has obviously taken. Sigmus again on the move. Poik trying to get out here too. Hans in a bit of trouble. Everybody is low. And now the Punisher is starting to also enjoy that fight. And new Brock is already dead, and he's not going to be the only one dying here. I think Shrimpy gets out, but barely. And the Protector, is still, the Punisher, is still in front of the gate. Could get baited over any second. There it is. The follow-up is ready. And the kill against Genji. Insta smash into the wall. Nicely done. Diablo going hot mode there for a second. And now with the wall already gone, they're making the play for the next kill. And it is Ural that falls with the fort being attacked too. Nicely done here. Ooh, nice setup for Bolur. But Hanzo falling. They get the kill against Junkrat, but Hanzo also eliminated. The fort's still down. That's the important part. They're level ahead now. Six kills against three. Rotations towards the bot lane. Nice job from Bolor. By no means have they won that game yet. As we said before, there's the comeback potential that we've seen now several times in action for OFD. But it's definitely a good start for them into the game. A nice lead here on all fronts. Experience, structures, and soon also in talents. Kills obviously heavily in their favor after the last brawl that we saw there. Level 7 talents now also gave us the aggression matrix on the side of D.Va. Cooldown reduction, always pretty amazing. And a good tool to have. And Wubi's explosion, I mean, it didn't really connect with anybody in the last fight, but it honestly just zoned them out and drove a wedge between the parts of the team. Poik, on the other hand, he is currently going a little bit in feed arena mode. Not intentionally or anything, but he is getting jumped every time first, and this is the third time that they were able to get the kill. And there is a lot of aggression against the low HP hero, and with Genji in particular, they're currently able to have a lot of an impact against Poik. And Hanzo died three times now. Three times already. So, well, with that, we're having even an invade on the Krasar camp. Invading this one hard before level 10 drops for their opponent. But level 10 abilities are there. Level 10 abilities in Heroes of the Storm are a little bit like Thanos. They're inevitable. In comes the move against uh, Genji. But there we have it. Metamorphosis is indeed in play. And D.Va went for the big shot. Massive opportunity lost by Wubi. He could have gone bunny hop. The best talent in the game. Funniest at least. But yeah, Metamorphosis is in. Lul Strike again. Poik prefers that on this map. Played it la yesterday already. So we're going to see a lot of Lulz going through that. Level 10 abilities on the other side. Give us actually the adjustment on Urel now too. Sacred Ground is going to be happening for her. Okay. I mean, obviously you're in Infernal Shrine. So there's a little bit more value for her there too. We stay a while and listen by Deckard Kane. Rest pretty much as you would expect it. But also we're going to see the next objective soon. Illidan is still doing his camp clear up to the top at this point. Doing his thing. And there's actually nobody on the top side dealing anything around the shaman camp. At least not just yet. They might do it later when the shrine gets announced. But they have to make a rotation there eventually. Especially with Wubi still aggressively pushing the lane out. Gia is currently sitting in the mid lane. And Gia, I mean, ever since they started rotating Gia also into the tank position, honestly, things have started to get a little bit better for them. 
Schwimpy was just not really good fit for him or Whoopi, it feels like. I mean, they are just having more of an impact on uh, other roles, I would say. That's probably what it comes down to at the end. Now with level 12 versus 11 and a half, OFD is nearly as far behind as you would maybe uh, suspect here. But again, position taken a little bit earlier. Schwimpy is going for the aggression again. Diva currently sitting mid-side. The next shrine is going to be ready in 10 seconds with a head start for Bolo. Keep the Dragon Queen in mind for 365. Traditionally, you're trying to drop that when you're roughly 20 stacks in. Usually lasts you the duration and allows you to secure that entire thing. But they're making the play already right here. Top lane pressure still with a Shaman Cam from earlier. So a nice setup from Bolo. Time definitely working in their favor right now as they're making the play. Already with a stun attempt. 13 against 5 stacks at this point. Wubi has the explosion of course too. There's a lot of tools in their belt which help them to secure the Punisher. And they're going to do exactly that. Explosion could be used. Wubi is already zoning them out. Could go for it right now if he wanted to. Lightning Breath is used here first though. Stay a while and listen baby. As Deckard Kane pops the ult. And we have in the meantime the Cleansing Flame on Alex Straza. There's the Lull Strike right away with actually a bit of damage. And the Explosion that hits Deckard Kane full on. They're going again for that, uh, for the Shrine. But 36, yeah they're going to get it. 37 for sure. Wubi is moving out again. Might actually be in a little bit of trouble here now. Schwimpy jumps in too, helps out. Punisher is in play. Are they going to get the value? There's the kill against uh, D.Va as expected. But now time for the Punisher to join the fight. Jump in here. Yeah, jump trigger. Should net them a little bit more value actually here in the bot lane. Level 13 talents are ready for them too. But yeah, the defense is there and the poke is still happening. Long is trying to zone them out with the new Barak diving in deep. Doesn't have any subterranean shield, but perfectly willing to go a bit more aggressive. Already baiting that back. As long as they can hold the fort, that would be great for OFD here. There's still a talent behind, but not for much longer. Nubarak goes in again, misses the second stun though. But the kill against 365. Genji with the Genji plays. Gets the kill there. But talking about Genji, he's in trouble. As Poik is looking for the kill still. Poik actually. Doing really well here now, but he has to be careful. He's still low, and Genji is trying to benefit from that position. But this time, Poik is ready. Jumps away with the trade and gets out of harm's way. Six kills against six, though. Kill count is, at this point, dead even. And they're starting to uh, go straight for another big brawl here. Schwimpy needs to be a bit careful. It's low, but so is long. They might be able to get the Nubara kill, and indeed they do take him down here. And D.Va is of course also full in, but they got the counter kill against Illidan. D.Va getting attacked. A blade of armor taken for Wubi on level 13. Tries to get the kill in against Junkrat. That didn't work out. Stay a while and listen. Big shot, baby. Going for it. Wubi pushing them back as Gia is there. And we have 365 coming down on this as well. Aggression all over the place right now. Actually a pretty fun game to be honest with you. Seven kills against seven. Nearly identical experience. Uh, it's pretty impressive there. I mean, again, structural perspective. Bolo were far ahead. No doubt about it. Top 4 top lane already down. Taking the bottom lane 4 down to 50% AHP is pretty decent too. And they took down the wall in the middle. But they're not really too far ahead when it comes to experience right now. The kill count is more or less even. It is even. And they can definitely try get a little bit more. Especially of course as Illidan is scaling into the late game. That's going to help them 100%. Next shrine is starting top side again. Which is, means that they could go for keep. Oh, a little fight there down to the bottom over the camp. Here comes the arrow, and oh, that is actually a value arrow right there. Great angle, the kill against the Nubarak. Alex Strazo, the final hit. And again, they're trying to keep Tubo in the fight. Urel is about to fall here, and it is Hanzo who delivers the final hit as they go in. Poik wants to have even a little bit more success here, but is about to fall against Genji. Honestly, Assassin on Genji is doing a great job in this game, and he is definitely the biggest threat for Bolo. Again, here comes the Dragon Bladers that are trying to go in. Schwimpy has to be careful as well. Schwimpy wants the kill. There's the deflect. Gets a metamorphosis through. Friend of foe, not even needed. Goes in again. Schwimpy knows one direction here, and then gets pushed out by Hanzo. But they're still trying to go for Degat Kane. Sick moves is on the run. Left, right, right, left. And he's not going to get away from this one, is he now? Well, he might actually, with the Nubara coming back. Yep, they're actually saving him. 
There's another attempt as Gia goes in a bit too deep. Yeah, Gia goes way too deep. Not only just did he dash into two towers, he also gets pushed even farther by Junkrat, who uses his displacement to put him straight over the wall. And that's the end of Diablo, losing the souls there. Uh, Assassin still low. Schwimpy is going for another hit. The cocoon for the second time. This fight is out. And there's the end of D.Va. Ural during all of this is already sitting top lane with the defense. But this game is getting all over the place right now. And Bolu is just brawling, 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 and brawling. Uh, 365 is still alive. And finally, Genji dies. Wheel it in. Oh, <laughs> he gets the kill, but he dies as well. Junkrat is dead too. The fight that never ends. The gift that keeps on giving. We're having 12 kills against 11 right now, and this game is just everywhere. The shrine topside, by the way, has been activated a while ago already. And yeah, everybody else is just sitting there. <laughs> like Straza, the only one who's saying, like, guys, I'm, I'm gonna start with this if this is okay with you because it's starting to get a little bit silly. So, like, Straza sitting top lane, but she's the only one. Mubi on Diva is finally starting to move over too, to at least help out a little bit. Went on level 16 into the torpedo dash here, in case you didn't see it already. But yeah, this is another head start and a pretty important one for Bolua on the shrine. So, they have a chance to go for the keep here with this. Especially since I think Dragon Queen is up at this point. So there's a lot of tools that they should have available to secure the last ones. They get a head start, as I said. So they get them into the double digits in the moment, and Illidan is obviously close by now, too. Uh, so this is starting to become nasty. 13 are there. Uh, let's see how long it takes them to actually commit to any of this. Uh, Wubi is already dancing around there. Getting a few more of those stacks. They're sitting at 17 against 5. Doing well. In comes the engage. Oh my god, a Nubarak again. Just incredibly low after the first engage. Yeah, the arrow comes through. They're trying to go for Tubo again. And he gets pushed out. That's the kill against the Nubarak first. It's not even Urel that falls first. And of course, Poig in the back. In trouble. And he dies. The explosion of Wubi not doing too much. But Genji is down. And that was always the biggest threat the entire time. Illidan is still harassing the old man. And finally, Degat Kane is realizing this is not going to work out for him. And there goes Urel too. Four heroes down. Shrimpy wants to get Junkrat as well. Has to dodge a couple of those grenades and does exactly that. But it seems like we have another protector, another Punisher in favor of Bolu. And this time we're talking about an Arcane Punisher here. Junkrat with the move into the bot lane. Might even take one of the camps here. But now that we're having the Shaman camp actually stolen away by Bolu in the top right position, things are dicey. I mean, this is going to be a push with catapults, with the Punisher, and also with the Shaman Cam. You can imagine how that goes. Usually it ends with your keep being destroyed. The main question here is, can Bolo maybe even do a little bit more in that situation? Honestly, if that Punisher just gets a good stun in, and there's a follow-up, they might be able to go for core right away. That might be an option for them. But first of all, they have to survive that little attack that we're seeing here. Level 20 would, of course, be great too, and they're forcing the fight. Yeah, Hanzo is taking the, the final view, but that's Illidan down. Illidan is dead, and yeah, they overstepped. They still take the Punisher anyways, but I highly doubt that that's going to get too much value now. So they stayed over too long. They waited for people to move back, and there's also Gia falling. Huh, is he? There's one heal, there's a second. Riptire. Oh, and the kill. Just as he has his souls back up. Dibbles goes down, loses the souls. Kenji is dead again. He came, he saw, and he died. Just as he came back from the respawn, the Punisher is just completely irritated by all of that action that's going on. There's like, guys, what's happening? Don't you want to push this one? Yeah. Nearly kills Junkrat, by the way. And is at least going to be able to take down that keep, I assume. But yeah, look at the kill count here. What is this? An ARAM? 17 kills against 15 right now. Whoopi is losing the nuke, but they are still going for the core here. They have, tw they have level 20 by now. Illidan is the only one that's dead, but everybody else is still fighting. There's another little strike, and we're having the Dragon Queen activated as well. That should definitely help them. There's the Cocoon out on the ground, but already shields are slowly falling on the core, but the defense is decent. Alex Straza is dead. Can they take a Nubarak at least? A turnaround in 10, Poik falls, but they kill a Nubarak, but it's still a two-for-one trade. Where's Illidan when you need him? Still on the move here. Core is losing hit points, but just not enough. If Illidan would be here, he could easily do that. Whoopi is also down. 86% on the core. Chia with a Hellgate escapes for a moment. 
and runs straight into the grenade. Illidan is currently trying to 1v9. I am not sure what Swimpy is doing here. Shrimpy is all alone at this point, gets mass pinged and for good reason is trying to get some value. I honestly don't know what Shrimpy is trying to do. Maybe increase his death count by one because that's what he accomplished here pretty impressively as well. 20 kills against 18 right now. This game is just full bananas. I mean, honestly, Polo is at this point just... Po I would be very surprised if they're not going to have a massive laugh currently in voice comms. Because they are just YOLOing it hard, and now it's 20 versus 20. Even with OFD score down to 81%, this is a little bit reminiscent of that Volskaya Foundry game. So, yeah. Now they're starting to do. Uh, to take structures as well. Uh, OFD, that is, so they've taken the first main structure now by eliminating the fort in the mid lane. Uh, but there's the vision for Poik. I'm still waiting for that, but now it's 20 versus 20. And by the way, the next objective spawns mid side. So there's obviously now a continuous pressure play through the top with the catapults that spawn on every single wave for Boluo. But yeah, OFD with the rotations now from one camp to another. As Illidan isn't there yet, there is no threat of a 5 versus 5. The Nubarak might be a little bit far out, but he's currently pushing them out. And uh, uh, the bot lane out. And we also have, of course, the vision for OFD on the top lane. Or at least we had on Hanzo, who defended the Shaman camp that was taken there. So there was actually no problem whatsoever. So now they're starting to go straight in for that potential fight that we're going to see here. And I mean, also, with that said, Urel on level 20, for example, going straight into the hollow ground, ho uh, hollow ground here. So it is actually going to do a lot for them. And you can see that Tubo is always adapting his playstyle now, too. He's just jumping around the entire time here through that. <laughs> well, and just as it's needed, he actually moves out of it. But yeah, so he went straight into uh, the hollowed ground and is using that in at least the last few fights there. So no Seraphim for him uh, by any means. Didn't go for that. Catapult's already on the core. Shouldn't really do too much. I mean, we're 20 minutes in, so it actually starts to hurt a little bit. But they seem unconcerned at this point. I'll be more concerned about that next uh, objective, especially with Junkrat around. I would still expect them to do well with the defense. I'd be shocked if that's not the case here. But they're not caring about the top lane. Honestly, at this point, they still haven't sent anyone back. I hope that before they head into the Shrine fight, they at least have Junkrat quickly deal with that for a moment. So hopefully. And yeah. Shrine in 14 seconds. Okay, Urel is there. There's no... Yeah, well, there's no Shaman camp on the left side. It was taken early. So... By OFD. So now they have the only camp here. So that's definitely going to help them to not experience the pressure through the top. But yeah. This could be the big fight. This could be the one that really matters here. Already looking for the engage. And nice wall stun again. Tries to follow that up with even more. Dragon Queen popped early. Very early here already. There's a lull again. But we're having also Riptire, Schwimpy, Metamorphosis out of the fight. That explosion could actually hurt. And no. They move away just in time. But yep. Yeah, right now, Catapult's already homing in on the core of OFD again. But of course, those shamans at the top lane are making sure that there are no reinforcements coming in. 21 minutes, quest completion for Junkrat. 21 stacks against 15. Honestly, OFD can take this one. Uh, there's another strike. Cooldown reduction on 20. For Hans, obviously, highly important here. Oh, that's not the only thing that's important. The kill against the Nuborak. That's gold right there. And Gia gets away, at least for the time being, with a quick Hellgate. Tubo is trying to follow it up, but can't do that so much. And on the right side, we're actually seeing the battle uh, even progressing with Whoopi with a big shot kill against Junkrat. Tubo is low too, and that's another kill secured. Big shots everywhere as Wubi is trying to also drop deck at Kane, but they at least get the kill against Genji. Nicely done, and now we have 22 kills against 20. And another Punisher in the hands of their opponent. Wubi is just sitting there. Deck at Kane tries and get the kill, but the Whoopster is still fine. Whoopster is still okay. Moving forward, and... <laughs> <laughs> going core. Wubi is going core. It's like, boys, I got this. Punisher is moving through the middle and will have to go through the fort first. But of course, with Illidan now in the mix, that core attack is a lot more realistic. Illidan always great in these situations. And that should actually be the conclusion of this series. Looks like it's going to be a 2-0 victory for Boluo as they are actually claiming the fifth spot in the standings. Who would have thought? Just imagine what they could have accomplished here if the start into this group stage would have been a little bit better for him.
But at this point, they're actually looking for more kills. Why go core if you can kill people? That's what they are thinking right now. There's the Riptide to take Whoopi down, and he actually dies. Whoopi is down 8% on the core. Make it 5, make it 4. 3, 6, 5. It's 1%, and that is game. A 2-0 victory for Bolo Wolf.